Greetings, Earth enthusiasts. If you ever wondered about the incredible perspectives our planet has to offer from high above here in the right place, I am Dr. Klaar Kutsi, and I'm thrilled to be your guide on this captivating journey into the world of remote sensing. Welcome. And please remember to like, subscribe to, and share this video. Thank you. In the previous video tutorial, we generated time series graphs or plots for each of our population data sets. So we created a time series plot for our WorldPop data set. We've created a time series plot for our CDAC data set. We've created the Landsat uh, time series plot as well. And we then compared these three uh, graphs with one another. And it seems like their numbers seem fairly similar, um, which gives some degree of confidence that the numbers actually might be fairly okay. But as I said, it's important to compare these numbers with official statistics from your um, statistics um, department or unit, your official statistics department. Okay, so I then indicated that these time series plots are for the region of interest as a whole. So it's not for a particular location within the region of interest or a particular city or town within the region of interest. It's for my municipality as a whole. Um, but I also know that within my region of interest, there's several towns, uh, not cities, several little towns or settlements. And I would like to find out or determine the population numbers within each of these cities to see which, or towns, sorry, to, to, to determine which of these towns have, uh, what first of all, what is their population numbers and how they compare to which one is the highest population, which is the lowest population, etc., etc. So, um, indicating in the previous video tutorial that um, we can generate these plots um, for each and every single town is indeed possible by um, just changing your region of interest. So, for example, um, I know there's a town here called Felderf, so I can go to my assets. I can go to, if I've loaded the asset, remember, um, if you have not, remember, you can load it. Um, if not, uh, or if you've already loaded, like myself, I've already loaded, so I go and uh, there's Felderf. Okay, so that's there. I just basically click on it. And it will add, so I just change this now to my region of interest and disable this one. And then I will generate these images and plots for that specific region of interest. But as I said, if I have seven, I have to do that seven times, which may be a quite tedious um, process. So rather than to do that, I will create within this um, script, um, I will generate um, the points or the towns themselves. I will generate ge uh, parameters, geographical parameters for each of these points, and then generate a time series for each of these points or towns. Okay, so um, yeah, so I don't want to go um, creating seven ROIs. I only want to use um, the one ROI, but specify each of the towns within my region of interest. Okay, so um, let's just go out there. Okay, so. Um, Let's just go to the particular script. Um, okay, so first point is on, let me just make it a little bit bigger so that it shows a little bit more clearly. Okay, let's make it a bit bigger. Okay, so remember we, uh, we concluded in our previous video tutorial with the normal time series uh, script. Um, and plotting that time series. Okay, so now we want to create. We want to create this. Okay, let's just make it bigger. So this is the different towns. Okay, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. Shalder, Paket, Bapot, Olinika, Aurora, Toskias, Pasvelanets. They're fairly small little towns. They're not, you know, massive cities like Cape Town or Joburg. They're basically fairly rural-based settlements and towns. So that's a seven that I know that's located within my region of interest. In your region of interest, it might be just the one, or maybe more. That's up there, I don't know. Okay, so what we're going to create is in five year intervals, you'll see there's five years that's 2000, 2005, 2010, uh, 2015, and 2020. So it will. Uh, and the reason why they give it in five-year intervals is because the CDEC time series is in five-year intervals. 
Okay, so if all of them were one year intervals, then they would generate it in one year intervals. And obviously, um, because two of the data sets only go to 2020, it then doesn't include the 2022 for, um, yeah. So this is only for world pop. Sorry, I should have, should have indicated this graph is only for world pop. Okay, so it's not for um, the three uh, data sets per se. It's only for world pop, and it gives it in five-year intervals, 20, 2000, 2005, etc., etc. So this is ultimately what we want to create. Remember, you can also download it and export it to your Excel, etc., etc. Okay, so this is what we want to generate. Okay, so first point of call is we need to identify our uh, towns. Okay, so I know where the towns are because, as I said, I, I, I stay in this particular area, so let's just... Uh, unselect um, all these images okay so there is my let's just make this bigger so there's my region of interest you can see there's a town field of there there's Aurora 2 Deerlinger 3 Yenneke 4 Phuket Bear 5 Portable 6 and, uh, and uh, which one did I Dwas Kaspers lies here 7 so there's a 7 town so 1 this was Kaspers is 2 there, real language 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So that's the towns that I want to generate population data with, uh, for the population statistics for time series. Okay, so first thing I'm going to create a feature collection. Okay, so I'm calling it cities. Now you can call it towns, settlements. Again, that's up to you. Okay, so I'm going to create a feature collection, and this feature collection will be the sum of these seven uh, towns or will be a collection of these seven towns okay so that's what's going to be my feature collection remember image collection is the images um that's the that is in each data set and this will be a feature collection which is geographical um locations okay so i'm gonna feature collection and i'm gonna create a geometry point remember you can also create a a rectangle there or you can create a, a circle there whatever we're just going to create a point but again that's up to you you can decide what you want to create and there's the coordinates for that point and i'm giving it a name feldriff okay so so how do i do that i go into my my town itself let's just open the satellite and, and un select the row itself so there's the town so i select a point so i go to um, my add marker this one here and i go to I try to be in the middle as possible okay i'll say why i'm going to be in the middle so let's say somewhere yeah that seems to be let's have a look so this is a town let's have a look this seems to be in the middle somewhere in the middle okay so i locate a marker there a geographical location or a centroid i do that there okay so now i go to my geometry and it will be in my geometry it will be located this is my eighth one and i just open uh, the coordinates and this is the eighth one i copy and paste it and i would then let's say replace this or um, copy that in there and i simply just paste it and there is um, that specific uh, town now or that specific geographical location loaded in my feature okay and you do the same so you go um, to all the other locations you use your point and so for example i would go to los caspers you see there's my point located there i can uh, edit it i can move it um, etc etc i can give it um, yeah so there's eight points currently within that uh, feature okay which is the seven and i just added that point just as a demonstration okay so let's um delete the first one um because so let's delete that one no, i can't delete it i can only delete it here okay i can only delete it let's go there this is the one that i want to delete and let's delete it okay so it's the seven points. Remember the seven towns that I've created. Okay. So I go to each of my little towns. I found a location roughly in the middle of each town. 
and I look um, uh, drop a pin there or drop a, a marker there and then I go to my my geometry variable and I collect the x and y coordinates and I simply just copy and paste it in my code okay simple as that so that's how you create now if you were to do a, um, a let's say a, uh, a polygon then that would be the coordinates of that polygon uh, a, let's say a top left and a bottom right coordinate or top uh, right coordinate and a bottom left coordinate for example okay so but anyway um, yeah so we create these seven points if I had less I would simply just delete some of these ones let's say that one I can delete or if I had more I just copy and paste it and continue with it if I had an eight down or nine down or whatever the case might be okay you'll see there is within my region of interest there is the the towns ah uh, come on there's the towns located and each of them have a, a centroid or have a marker which is roughly in the middle of each town and I generated its x and y coordinates or uh, its centroids and I just used it to generate my feature collection and I give each one a name and then and that's the reason why I use or uh, you use um, pins um, and that's the reason why you need to look somewhere in the middle because we create a buffer okay in this case we create a 10 kilometer buffer in each area okay so that's why we select it somewhere in the middle so that the buffer would then uh, capture the whole of the town okay so if i had um, let's just uh, um, so let's say i had this marker somewhere here to the bottom then it would capture a whole lot of nothingness and it will uh, miss a whole lot of population so that's why you put these um, value of these um, locations somewhere in the middle you'll see all of them is somewhere in the middle so that when i put my buffer it captures the whole area so the population statistics will not just relate to that marker it will actually be the population within that 10 kilometers buffer okay so and you can change that buffer if you have bigger cities or towns you can use a 20 kilometer Okay, it's a radius, né? it's a buffer, so it will be in that specific area, 10 kilometers in either side, in the circular format, that's why we don't create um, the rectangle as well, because, yeah, you can use it, this would, I think it would be roughly the same effect, but anyway, so we create the buffer, and so the population count, or the population statistics, would actually be relevant for that buffer as a whole, and not just for the point which makes it quite quite a neat function to, to use. Okay, so now I'm doing all of the statistics in one piece of code rather than to generate seven different um, regions of interest and run them individually. Uh, I'm now running all seven as in one piece of code. So I've generated a feature collection um, using the um, point geometry as per the coordinates and I generate a buffer for each of these areas and what is that the population count will be for that buffer okay and then basically uh, let me get bigger again uh, we generate this chart okay we're going to generate a chart what we're going to get we're going to use the image collection okay the, remember the image collection is all that collection of individual images in this case I'm using the world pop okay but you can use any of the other three we can do that my regions would be the cities or it will generate then um, the statistics the dot the, the population statistics for each of the cities it will generate the sum and we will just give it a name and that is just um, uh, semantics regarding the graph itself it will have a title etc et okay so that is generating the, the graph itself and that is generating the uh, feature collection so i'm working with a feature collection and an image collection and i'm merging the two collections and that's giving me this specific statistic okay so let's make it bigger okay so let's okay so remember we can by using this little export button or bigger button we can generate this, a chart like this and as i said we can download this as a csv file you can download it in any of your 
uh, folders for further use. Okay, so from here you can clearly see that the town of Paketpeg have the highest population. <coughs> you see there, 19,000, 22, almost 23,000, etc. And I said it's in five year intervals. Um, the town with the smallest population is Aurora, you can see there, and you can see its population have basically stayed the same. Let's have a look at the little 3,400, 1,000, let's say let's say again, 1,065, 1,000 is about a couple of hundred increase, again 200 increase. Okay, uh, yeah, so it seems like it's about a 100 to 50 to 200 increase per year, but it's still small. If we look at um, second biggest, would be Riedelange is 1.3, uh, 1.5, 1.7, and 2.3. That's what I'm saying. They're very, very small. The three major uh, urban settlements within um, our region of interest is the town of Veldruf, town of Paketberg, and Portwell. That's the three major ones. Um, and you can see the relationship between them have stayed fairly constant, although it seems like the population in Paketberg have, have expanded faster than the population in these other three locations. In fact, it seems like the population in, Ar in Aurora has sort of plateaued and um, have stayed fairly constant over the last number of years. Okay, so yeah, so we can generate now a time series plot for each of my areas. And let's say if I make this a 20 square kilometers, remember now it will capture a wider population. If there's population that we've missed with the 10 kilometers, we can now do a 20 kilometers and, and that could potentially um, uh, include those populations that we've missed. So let's run it again and see what that results uh, looks like. Let's have a look and see, it will generate now. Now, as I said, fortunately, all of these um, data sets, these um, um, statistics that we've generated can be exported and you can use it in um, your in Excel or wherever you want to call it. Okay, so that's 20 kilometers. Now you can see there's a big difference. Okay, populations have increased, um, but you can see there's a much closer um, number between Feldriff and Paketpe. Uh, but now you have to be careful for double counting because there's towns that's very close to one another. So by expanding your your radius to 20 kilometers, you may be double counting uh, towns. And that's why the numbers may appear much bigger than if you had the, the 10 kilometers. So just be careful that you don't double count because of this distance, because I said there's certain towns that's very close to one another. Okay, so that seems to indicate Portal 44,000, uh, Paquette Pair 58, that seems way, way too much. Doesn't this? There's, there's not 55,000, so this may include uh, those Caspers in these places in terms of double counting. Uh, and St. Helena Bay, so this number could be about three towns because of the 20 kilometer radius. Okay, so 20 kilometers seems might be a little bit uh, over the top. And um, let's say we want to um, use a different data set. So uh, let's say we want to use, let's say the land, uh, land scan data set. Okay, so remember it's um, band is B1. So I simply just um, replace uh, the image collection with um, the new one uh, with the Landsat unique identifier. Let's see if I need it. And I simply just run. Um, okay, I've made. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, so let's have a look and see if it works or not. Let's have a look and see. It's busy generating the chart. There we go. Remember that 2001 year, which is the anomaly which actually should delete. It actually shows, um, you can see a the felder of being the highest, okay, but it's still 20 kilometers. So we actually need to make it 10 kilometers simply for the double counting. Because that's, can't be correct. That felder has more than Paquette. Let's run it again. 
and it should display now. So that's the beauty of, of these uh, scripts. You can just, or codes, you can just simply change the parameters and it will give you, yeah, so here clearly it shows that again, um, Paquette Perg, higher population than, than Feldruf, which is correct, although the two seems to be, now this is quite different to the, the previous one. Not just in absolute, but also the closeness. But it still suggests that the three major towns is felt of Paquette Bear Portable. The other three are very, very small. Um, and I said, um, this 2000 is a normally, remember, we showed it in that uh, graph. Okay, so that is that. Okay, so there's the graph. And I said, you can export it. Um, to Excel for further work in Excel if you so choose to. Okay, so that's a neat way of um, generating the statistics in one go for the seven towns. I said if you have more or less, you just add them or subtract them here. You can change the buffer to either expand the population reach or the count reach, or you can decrease it. That's totally up to you. And then you can play around with the settings of the graph to make it nicer, prettier, change the names, whatever the you want to do with that. So that's quite a neat way of generating the statistics per the population statistics, time series statistics per per town within my region of interest, rather than to run the code um, seven times for each region of interest, which obviously uh, you could do. Most probably would be a bit more accurate because you don't have to play around with the radiuses, uh, but that's again up to you. Intuitively, there shouldn't be too much of a difference. Okay, well, thanks. This is population. We're still continuing our work on population um, images. Um, and um, we've got a couple more to go on population before we say farewell to that and start our journey with a, a new data set. But before that, let's uh, uh, thank one another for um, being with me on this journey. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to having you aboard for the next, for our, for the continuation of the journey. And again, yeah, please remember to subscribe and to, to like and share and all these fancy things. And um, stay tuned. I will uh, see you on the other side.